Greetings everyone, this is the part 3.9 of the EEG Machine Learning Deep Learning Series. In this part, we will see BCI Competition 4. There are multiple data sets in the BCI Competition 4, but we are going to use this motor imagery data set that is data set 2A. There are 22 EEG channels in this data set. The range of this channel is 0 0.5 to 100 Hz and there are 3 EOG channels. The sampling frequency is 250 Hz and the number of classes are 4, total subjects are 9. The description of the dataset can be seen from here and we can see that how this dataset is collected and what is the protocol of this dataset collection and there is a table given which is very important which tells us the event code. If the event ID is 276 then it will mean eyes are open and if it is 277 it means eyes are closed. But we are mostly interested in 769, 770, 771 and 772 because these IDs correspond to the classes of our interest. We are going to classify these left, right, foot and tongue which are four classes. So let's start with the data set. I have, I have uploaded the data set in my Google Drive. So I am going to mount the Google Drive with my Google Collab. And after that, I will install MNE package, which we are going to use for the handling EEG data. So that it will take some time to mount and initialize. After that, we will see what we can do. From the paper, actually from this table, I have created this pair. 1023 is related to rejected trial. So if you check that, 1023 is related to this rejected trial. 768 is related to the start of our trial and you can see that 768 is related to the start of our trial. So we are going to use this information later. Our Google Drive has been mounted. Now we are going to install MNA. And after that I will copy the content from the Google Drive to my Google Collab and then I will unzip the data into the data folder. You can see that currently there is no data because we haven't copied that from Google Drive and now we are going to copy and unzip it. Now you can see that we have data and in the data we have multiple files. So we are going to import MNE and after that import of MNE I am going to take a sample data set that is a01t.gdf. GDF is the extension of the file. So let me call raw equal to mne.io.read raw gdf from mne io we will import the raw gdf function and with the help of that function we will use the we will load the data so this i will pass this one of the file let me copy the path and i will put it here and after that i will run it so you can see that could not determine the channel type. In this data set, we do not have the information of the channel location or the channel name. So there are channels which are named as EEG instead of their actual name. There what is the channel location such as FZ, PG or what is that. We have also three EOG channels which are treated as EEG channel because we don't have provided the information of these EOG channel. So I am going to provide EOG channel information so that the EOG channels are considered as EOG channels instead of EEG channels. Now I am going to run it again. Display. If I don't define this EOG channel, then these channels are also defined as EEG channel. Now we are not going to use any EOG channel. We only we have to use only the EEG channel, which are 22. So I am going to drop this EOG channels. Now the number of channel lefts are 22, which previously are 25. Once we get rid of the channel, we need to extract the annotation, which are actually the event information 
from this data set or from this file. So I am going to get events. We have this info. We have these events in this data set 1023, 1072, and 768, which you can see also in this table. But there are some events which are in this table but not in this data set. So we have to see what is the dictionary of this event. So let me define, let me print this events. This is a tuple in which the first item is basically the events and the second is the coding of that event. And 1023 belongs to 1, 1072 belongs to 1 and 772 belongs to 10. So I am going to first uh, let's say see what is actual events are. So I will do the, I will call the first item and from the first item let's see we display the first 20 rows. You can ignore the second column which is the 0. The first and the third columns are important. The first column shows the starting point that was from 0 or from 29683 points or from 29683 points there are some even duplicates uh, duplicate starting point also but there are other thing, important things is that these are the channel these are the event information such as 5 correspond to basically so first I have to create an other other dictionary which will help me to understand this data more properly. So for that I will go here and 1023 is actually 1 here. 1023 is 1 so I am going to call it as 1. 1072 is 2 similarly 3. If we check the 772 here this is actually 10. 768 is 6 start of the trial. So if it is 5 it means that this is the start of new run. If it is 7 it means that it is the class 1. So we need 4 things for 4 events from this. We need 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 events or I believe 7, 8, 9, 10 events not the 6 one. So I am going to create an event dictionary which is actually like this. If it is 1, it is reject. If it is 2, it is I movement. If it is 3, it is I open. If it is 4, it is I close. 10, it is class 4. So now it's time to plot all of these events. Now we need the events which is basically this information this array we need to pass this array and actually this array is stored as index 0 so I will say 0 because the first one is basically the dictionary so I have to pass this array events 0 then I have to pass the event id we show that which event id belong to what let's go if this is 6 then what does mean if it's 6 it means new trial so I, I am going to pass this event dictionary and after the event dictionary I have to provide the sampling frequency which we can get from the raw dot info. And after that I need one more thing that is first sampling. So if I call this, let's see if we code something, okay, this is comma instead of full stop. So this is the event. The class 4 can be seen with this dot and the blue shows the rejected one. So we got all of these events. We have to separate the classes event from these all of the events because we are not interested in all events. We are only interested in classes of events. So I am going to create epoch for that. And in epochs, I, I will provide the raw, raw data, the events array and the events id.
in event id i can also pass this dictionary or even i can also pass this uh, values so i am going to pass this value that is 7 8 9 10 because i am interested in these last events instead of all of the events If I check the shape of this data, it should be something like have 22 channel and have around some events and some trials. And it should have 22 channels, sequence of the length of the sequence and the number of trials. These are 22 events, 22 number of channels and 176 is the sequence of the, is the length of the sequence for each, each event. After that I can get, I have to get the labels from these events. Label equal to epoch dot event id epoch dot events. If I print these labels, I will get this information, but I only need this last one. So I am going to do, I am going to get the last channel only. So now I have the events and the corresponding classes. So by using this technique, I can do classification or whatever I want with this data. So let me create a functionality but to load all of the files but before that let me view how these events look like if we plot them before that we need to understand what is different between an epoch and an evoke let's say epoch versus evoke actually evoke is an epoch in which a stimulus is present as in our scenario there are stimulus present such as tongue foot left right we have to use the proper word evoke in which a stimulus is evoked uh, the proper definition of evoke is that when a epoch is averaged we get an evoked response basically so let's say that from the epoch we get the seventh event or the class or the events of seventh class and we then average it We will do this for all of the classes. Now I am going to plot all of them. But before that I have to create a dictionary which is corresponding to the name of the event and the evoked event. After we got this dictionary, which is actually what is the label of the class, what is the name of the class and what is the evoked response of that class. Then I will use plot compare evoked functionality from MNA to compare all of these evoked potentials. And this is how our response look like. The blue shows the left and the right, orange shows the right, green shows the foot and the red shows the tongue. This is response is generated between 0 0.2 to 0 point around 3 millisecond or something like that. We can even start from 0 0.1 and for that we have to define this in our epoch step. For example, in epochs where we generated the epochs. We have to define the t min and t max. What is the minimum time and the maximum time? t min can be 0 0.1, t max can be 0 
the by default t min is 0.2 minus 0.2 and t max is 0.7 and t max is 0.4 and t max is 0.5 now we have changed it to 0. minus 0.1 and 0.7 and you can see that this will start from minus 0.1 and goes to plus 0.7 so this is how our evoked potential look like after that I need to create a functionality which will combine all of the files into one array. The first thing we need to read the data and here we will do path. Then we have to drop the EOG channels. Once the EOG channels are dropped, we have to set the EEG reference. After that, we have to get the events. Once we got the events and the epochs, we need to have labels. Then we will do we will get the features which we can get from the epochs dot get data. After that, we have to return both of the information. Now let's pass our file, let's say this one. Okay, it says that MNE does not load data into main memory, use preload equal to true. So I'm going to use preload equal to true here. Now let's check the shape of the features and the corresponding labels. It is 288 events and we have 288 label, one for each events. If we, I pass this subject number 4, let's see what we got. We got an error no matching event found for 9. It means that even 9 is not available in this data set. So what we have to do is try to give us an error, give us a warning. On missing equal to warn. Let's say if an event is missing, just warn us instead of giving us an error. And we have 144 events. And this is the end of this tutorial. What you have to do is that you have to loop each of the file and then you have to pass it to the read function. Once you pass it to the read function, you will get the features and labels of each file. Then you have to concatenate the features and labels into one array. This is the task at your end and I hope you will like this tutorial. Thank you.